Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to our little lesson on ice seals in New England. And my name is Brian and this is Ashley. We're part of Seco Science Center's Marine Mammal Rescue Team. And we wanna share a little bit of information about you about two species of seals that come down to visit New England's coastline from the Arctic every single year. It's not just Santa Claus that comes down to visit us <laughs> from the Arctic uh, this time of year. So we want to we want to share some facts about the the biology uh, of the biology of these animals, um, their behaviors, and just a little bit about the season so far. So really, um, I a big a big fact that I want to talk about when we when we speak of ice seals is that they have a unique behavior that you don't really see in our other uh, harbor seal or gray seal species. And that is that they actually do hydrate themselves by eating uh, ice and snow, which we usually we'd find on our coastline up here. Um, but this actually can be detrimental to these animals when humans and dogs come into the picture because they tend to also do this thing that we all do uh, as humans called stress eating. So when these animals become stressed on the beach, um, when they're when humans are too close or your dog is nearby, um, and they become stressed. And what they actually do is they try and eat what's around them. So they're they're used to be, there being snow and ice on the ground. But if there isn't snow and ice, they tend to eat rocks and sand. So just a, a quick little fact about their the behavior of these ice seals that I really wanted to push forward. First off. Um, just stressing the fact that it's it's crucial when you're around these animals to stay 150 feet away and to call our hotline um, just to keep those animals safe because obviously sand and rocks are are real roughage and and they're not good for these animals. Uh, they're, they, we we see this when we respond to them quite often. Um, so I wanted to to quickly start with that that kind of bit of advice on what to do if you see one of these ice seals. Um, and now I'm going to kind of hand it over to Ashley to talk about a few, the two different species themselves, harp seals and hooded seals. Sure. Um, so let's talk about the one that's a little bit more common for us first, um, and that would be the harp seal. So this animal is one of my favorites. I know we shouldn't pick favorites, but it's hard. Look at that photo. It's hard not to like them. Um, so typically we see juvenile harp seals down here, and that means that we see this type of coat, which is referred to as the beater coat. And usually they'll be a creamy, sometimes a little bit darker, but a creamy undertone with varying brown spots. So if you think of a Dalmatian, uh, a Dalmatian dog, you know, they all look different. They have different spots in different areas. Some have a lot of spots. Some have a few spots. Um, some of these harp seals will only have a couple of spots. So, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to figure out exactly what they are and what stage of life that they're at. Uh, but for the most part, they have, you know, the creamy undercoat with the, with the varying spots. Uh, but the spots are great in that if we are looking at an animal over a couple of days, we can track if it's the same animal, even if it's on a different beach, simply by having similar photos of both animals. Um, we can match up the spots. That's a little bit harder with some of our other species, but with this species, it tends to be a pretty good indicator of whether we're looking at the same animal. Um, but this animal is pretty interesting in that if you, if we do need to intervene, if the animal is sick or injured or getting harassed and needs to be relocated, um, this animal, when it goes into that fight or flight mentality, it will basically possum up and play dead. So they'll shrug up their neck. Uh, they'll stay very, very still and stiff, which sometimes makes it a little bit difficult to get them into the kennel to move them. Um, but this animal, you can see that one was on guard. They sometimes will be vocal. They'll open their mouth, show their teeth, and let you know that they don't want you around them, um, which is great. Those are all things that we look for. Uh, but unfortunately, when we have these more mild winters, sure, we've had some of the cold weather lately, but we certainly haven't had a lot of snow this winter. Um, that's tough on these animals, especially the young ones, that this might be their first winter coming down here. Um, they're not used to not having all of that snow and ice to just eat at their disposal whenever they want. Um, so sometimes they will get into trouble and they'll eat, you know, they'll eat rocks and they'll eat sand. And you can imagine, you know, even to the untrained individual without a marine mammal, you know, background, sand and rocks is not a good thing to be trying to get through the stomach and run through the intestines. Um, and it can be fatal for them. Yeah. Uh, so and actually, I, I, on top of that. Yeah. And I do have a video here uh, from one of our responses of 
that behavior. So you can kind of, you can really see that here, this, this animal, there's no snow on the beach, there's no ice. Uh, it's, it's clearly eating that sand right in front of it, as you can see, um, which as soon as we see that, we know, you know, that's, that's something that we pick up on immediately. And we know that there's something off with this animal. Um, you know, this, this animal might be dehydrated. Uh, it might not be in the best health. Um, and we'll usually end up stepping in and, and responding in some measure there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so and so that's that's what you really don't want to see. And that's really stressing the point of why you need to, to stay back and wait for us, the the respond, the expert responders to come down to the beach. Um, and we'll tell you that as soon as you call us on the hotline to, to keep back and watch for these things. Um, so I just want to share that with you first. Is there anything else about harp seals um, that, that you think folks would want to know? Sure. Um, so if you think about our two year round species, the harbor seal and the gray seal, uh, when those animals are born, they're with mom generally 21 to 28 days, so three to four weeks, and then they're completely independent. Um, harp seals, the mothers give birth to them typically February, March, um, and they're born on the pack ice up in the Arctic areas. Um, so, you know, pack ice is important for them. These animals are born on the pack ice. They're only with mom for about 12 days, and then they're independent. Mom will leave them and not return. Uh, but then they'll often spend upwards of six weeks on that pack ice before they move out to open water. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, there is some some theories and, you know, talking between researchers and scientists and biologists that, you know, their season is very dependent on how much pack ice there is. If there isn't a lot of pack ice and these animals are forced into the water before they're ready, you know, the survivability that year of the pups is not going to be good. Uh, yeah. Whereas a good pack ice year, you know, they can stay there for weeks and weeks and not have any issues. Uh, so that's really important. Um, and even more so when we talk about the next species, you know, that has the shortest lactation of any any mammal. Yeah, definitely. And and I just want to show one more picture too here of the harp seals. This is actually why they get their name. Looking at the adult harp seal, uh, you can see that they they kind of get rid of that, that coat, that uh, the, the kind of brown spots. And they develop this harp, this harp-like shape on their back, and that's really where they get their name. And this this is an adult harp seal, and it's it's not completely out of the ordinary for us to get these animals down here, um, but it they are a little bit more rare than the juveniles, which we more commonly see, right? Right. Yeah, and so I just I just wanted to show that that image to the audience. Um, I think the adults that was, are pretty unique looking, though. There's there's no mistaking them for what species they are. <laughs> oh yeah, and and actually, uh, you mentioned this before, but harp seals they're also unique in that they they find themselves in interesting predicaments um, when we respond to them because they do chase that ice up yeah. river and in they kind of follow the ice wherever it's going. And they will find themselves in weird places. Like, for example, this one was, uh, I believe, a few years ago. Uh, was this someone's backyard, Ashley? Yes, this was, ooh, I believe this animal was in Gloucester. Definitely was in Massachusetts, but I believe it was Gloucester. Um, so our colleagues at NOAA Fisheries reached out to us for assistance. Um, this animal, obviously, as an adult, had been there already for a couple of days. Um, but was unique in that it had come up and over this family's seawall when there was a flood tide because of a full moon. Yeah, um, that sometimes does happen. So he just needed a little bit of help to find his way back to the water. We were able to find a break in the seawall. Yeah, uh, but sometimes and this, we also this find guy. Like in, in a parking lot. You know, right out on the pavement. You know, moving about the parking spots and. You know, we just never really know where we're going to find them because you can imagine on the beaches or on the rocky shore, even as the tide ebbs and flows, you know, the the sand is staying most of the time. The rocks are moving around a bit, but the, the snow and the ice tends to go away pretty quickly in those areas. Yeah. And these animals eat it. You know, they depend on it. They're used to being on it. They're used to resting on it. You know, we'll often get calls, especially when they're resting on their back, which is common for them to do. You know, people think they're stuck to the ice, but it's yeah. totally natural for them. Um, but as that ice on the shoreline and the snow on the shoreline goes away, you know, oftentimes in parking lots and backyards, there's a lot more of it, whether it's yeah. been plowed up or it's just in a shady area. Uh, so they'll, 
they'll tend to get a bit wayward as they look for that and follow it around. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And speaking to that point of them resting on their backs, I'm gonna transition into our next species here, the hooded seals, because I do have a great picture here of a uh, hooded seal that we responded to last year, which was laying on its back the entire time that we responded. Um, so actually, uh, Ashley, if you wanna speak a little bit more to the biology of hooded seals, uh, mm -hmm. I, you started mentioning that they have the shortest lactation period of any seal species, but I know they're, they're unique in a few other facets than that too. Yeah, so these animals, so if you think of harp seals being very similar to our harbor seals in that in full grown, they're about two to 300 pounds. Hooded seals, which is pictured um, there, when they are adults, they're more similar to our gray seals. Uh, so the males especially will, will reach 700 pounds plus. Uh, so very different in that aspect between the two, uh, but also hooded seals are very territorial and very aggressive. Uh, so they will absolutely stand their ground. That adult um, harp seal as well that we showed lashed out at us with its flippers. Uh, so these animals are pretty aggressive animals, but the hooded seal, they are only with mom for three to four days and then they're completely independent. So you can imagine for that reason alone, they have to be able to stand their ground and be aggressive because from a very, very young age, they're alone. Um, so even this animal here that we had picked up, this animal did go through rehab and get released um, because it was not doing well. But even though it was feeling extremely poorly, you can see she was still, when we got close to her, she was still very aggressive. Um, and their vocalizations are extremely unique. Also, their, their face is very unique. Their eyes are set very far apart and they're very large compared to our other seal species. Yeah. Um, so they almost look a little bit alien-like, but their vocals are very similar, for those Star Wars fans out there, to Chewbacca. <laughs> um, their yep. vocals are very low, very grumbly, um, almost I actually in a sense. <laughs> I, have, I have a clip here for people to, to listen into that. So I'm gonna play that real quick for you. So I don't know if you could hear that there, but they give they give the low Chewbacca. Yep. You know, uh, it's it's really wild. Um, but but yeah, and and like you said, the adults they they're very aggressive. These animals, um, similar to the to the gray seals and the pups. I I remember responding last year. We responded to one near Hampton Beach, and it it, it was very sick. But as soon you know, uh, we transferred it into rehab, and and the folks in rehab were like. These, you know, it's it's definitely got some spunk to it. It's 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 you know very energetic. It's just that's their nature, basically. Right. Yeah. So very very interesting. And and um and hooded seals, the adults too. Just to mention, they I find this wild. I I mentioned it to to folks that we we teach in our programming. Look up a YouTube video of of adult hooded seals and check out what the males do uh to to attract females and and to fend uh, to kind of fend off other males they they have a special membrane that they basically shoot out of their nose uh in this big it looks like a big red balloon and they flap that around to show that they are a dominant male in the territory so it's it's really wild i highly suggest checking that out um we'll leave a link in our in the comments here but um, i'm okay with having not seen an adult male hooded seal in our territory <laughs> Yeah, they they probably be pretty difficult to, uh, to help. <laughs> um, these young ones, the young ones you guys just saw in the photos and video clips, um, those are juveniles as well, similar to the harp seals. That's most of what we see down in our area. Um, but these animals, so I mentioned the harp seals are referred to as beaters when they're juveniles, um, and it refers to their pelage or their coat. But the hooded seals are referred to as bluebacks. And the reason for that is, you know, they're very distinguishable as well in that they have a very creamy, light colored abdomen or belly um, and their dorsum, their backside is, it looks, almost looks black, but in the right light, it almost has a silvery blue hue to it. Um, so very, very unique. They don't have spots um, that dark coloring will carry forward over their face or their hood, if you will. Um, so it basically looks like they have like a sweatshirt on their back and they've pulled the hood up and over. Uh, so that's a very, very indicative um, visualization of, of 
how to tell them apart versus the harp seal that you'll generally find spots on, um, or our harbor and gray seals that we have here year round that are more of a mottled um, coat coloring or marbled coat coloring. Yeah, exactly. And I, I want to kind of wrap up here uh, just by saying that we haven't actually responded to any uh, hooded seals or harp seals yet. We, we may have one today. Um, yeah. We're not totally sure on the hotline. But Waiting on photos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so it, it's been it has been a slow year um, that could you know, we don't like to speculate. Um, it could be due to a number of different factors. But we want you to keep your eyes out for these animals because it, it's really we want to stress that that the, the public, all of you folks who are listening right now, uh, you are you are our eyes on the beach. And so if you do see one of these animals, we really you know, we're stressing here. Keep 150 feet away. You don't want to stress them out. You don't want to. You don't want them to be eating rocks and sand. Um, and give our hotline a call, and we will walk you through step by step um, what you should do before our volunteers and our trained, um, you know, our, ourselves are uh, come down to the beach to help out. So, um, really, that's that's kind of what I wanted to stress here is that you know uh, it, we haven't we haven't seen any of these animals yet, um, and. It's it's basically up to you guys to to report them to us and and to keep these animals safe. So now now you have the tools to do it. You have the knowledge and and the power to do so. So um, we look forward to to sharing any of the responses that we do have in 2021 uh, with you all. Uh, Ashley, is there anything else you wanted to to kind of share with everyone? Um, so if you guys are people that frequent the beach often. Um... But even, even if you're not and you go to the beach once in a while, the hotline is a great number just to keep in your phone. Yeah. Um, even if you come across something else, inevitably we do get calls about, you know, sea ducks and seagulls or jellyfish on the beach or, you know, even something as strange as a beaver being on the beach. Even though those aren't animals that we're permitted to respond to and to deal with, uh, we can route you to the appropriate agency. So we'd rather, you know, get a phone call and help you out to get to the right person than to not have that animal reported at all. Um, but especially for our marine mammals, um, we know what to do. So definitely reach out to us, keep that number in your phone. Um, it's scrolling through the bottom right now, but it's just a good number to have on you so that you don't have to spend time out there Googling or you know asking Siri who the, the right appropriate agency is to call. Exactly. We're, we're here to help. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks to everyone for listening and uh, for educating yourselves on ice seals in New England. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Now thanks. get out there and find some for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly.